Hello again and welcome. This is just going to be a quick update video on our little breadboard oscillator for the EV blog contest. You can see that currently I have the YIG attached directly to our microwave counter. And in the previous experiments I was running this YIG at 6 GHz. You can see it's currently set for 7 GHz. And you can see it's drifting downwards. I've just turned this thing on. It's going to take a little bit to you know, stabilize, but this is good enough for this experiment, I think. Let's go ahead and detach this real quick. And I'm going to move this cable over to our splitter. So again, you can see this is the output of our oscillator and that is going into one leg of the splitter and the other leg here is coming up to our counter the other side is going into our mixers RF input currently we don't have the YIG attached and the reason for that is I just want to show you essentially without the YIG or a secondary oscillator what frequency this thing runs at so there's no hocus pocus all we're going to do now is just clip on our power lead here and let's go ahead and power up this oscillator and you can see it's running at roughly 10.9 gigahertz or so it's going to move around a little bit as things stabilize now the scope currently is connected to the output of the amplifier of course we're not going to see anything with that just yet what we need to do is go ahead and hook up our YIG. So this is with our YIG attached. And again, no other changes. You can see our oscillators drifted slightly. It's about uh, 10.89 gigahertz now. And again, the 10.9 minus the roughly 7 should give us roughly 3.9 gigahertz. And let's just zoom in here. And you can see it's roughly, call it 3.7 gigahertz. Again, I'm sure that YIG's drifted around a little bit. You can see it's not a very clean looking sine wave, but somewhat sinusoidal. And we're not going to expect real good signal integrity based on this breadboard here. So before I forget, the reason that I reprogrammed this YIG, again, we were running this at 6 gigahertz. So again, if we look at the, call it 11 gigahertz of the oscillator, minus the 6 gigahertz, that gives us 5 gigahertz coming out of this. And that's certainly within the range of what our LaCroix 8500A can read. Uh, the problem is actually this mixer's IF frequency is only rated for 4 gigahertz. And it attenuates the signal so badly I can't get a good signal coming out of here so basically what I did is I raised this up 1 gigahertz that pushes us down to roughly 4 gigahertz coming out we are pretty much at the limit of the mixer but we are able to get a signal out of it so hopefully that clears that up this is after adjusting the feedback network see now it looks like a pretty decent sine wave this is running wrist mode now. This is uh, 200 giga samples per second. We hurt the performance slightly. It's at uh, 10.5 gigahertz now. And if we zoom in with the camera here a little bit. You can see where it 3.55 again versus 10.55 and again that's just basically a result of adjusting that front end network let me just change this back over to real time mode and you can see it still looks pretty decent This is at uh, 20 giga samples per second right now. It's a little unstable, but not too bad. Let's 
do uh, display and we'll turn the persistence on Yeah, it looks pretty decent.